Welcome to the Nut Gallery Review, bringing you the news on the media that shapes your world. Welcome to episode 172. I'm Jason Schulte. I'm Sean McFadden. Well, to start out with a little tidbit of news is Disney Plus is to re- is going to release a Willow TV series and Warwick Davis is going to be part of it. Have they elaborated at all on how big a part he's going to be on this one? Nope, not really. Hmm. They're signing up people to be a part of it. So so they're still in the casting stage? Uh, or at least they're just slowly announcing some extra people. Okay. I'm excited. I loved Willow as a, as, as a kid. I still love Willow. Who am I kidding? Willow was amazing. It was fantastic. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to see what they do as a TV series with it. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, the movie worked, but I don't know how you break a, break a, break that down into a, a serial. Um, but, you know, they've done great with Mandalorian. You may, you may want to move your cord. Your cord is catching and keeps popping. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they did great with Mandalorian. So I guess hopefully they sort this out equally as well. Yeah. Have you been keeping up with the Mandalorian? Uh, I think I'm like three episodes into the second season. Uh, I think that's all there is so far. But mm, are you sure? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm, there's at least one I haven't watched yet. Okay. All right. Then. Ah. Anyway, we won't we won't talk about it. It's good. Watch it if you haven't. It is good. It's solid. It's. <laughs> Some people have given it a little bit of grief and I'm like, what? Enjoy it. Yes, some of the episodes are very fan service but that's okay. We we can endure that for a good story. Yeah, and it seems like the second season is actually uh, more story-driven than maybe the first one. I'm really enjoying the second yeah. uh, second season thus far. Yeah, I was worried it was a little uh, a little bit flash in the pan for the first season. But uh, second season's solid so far. Yep. Nothing like fighting a great dragon. That's right. <laughs> All right. So December, we actually have two pages, two pages of movies coming out. Whoa. I've actually got a pretty healthy list of video games coming out too. Which is, which is weird. This close to Christmas, but uh, movie releases right off the bat. Uh, I apologize right away because whoever wrote this bumper decided that there was no word count to it. (laughs) So it's kind of wordy. Uh, December 4th, all my life, Jennifer Carter and Solomon Chow are sweet, love, sweet, fun, loving, newly engaged couple whose whole life seems ahead of them. But when Sal is diagnosed with terminal liver cancer in December, their plans for a summer wedding become impossible in a race against time. Jen and Sal's friends and family launch an online fundraiser to help the couple create their dream wedding in just two weeks. Now it goes on and on and on about how this capture, everyone just falls in love with how this, <laughs> all the love and support they're showing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, stars Jessica Roth and Harry Shum Jr. Harry Shum Jr. Um, was the warlock in um, Shadowhunters and he was really good. So and he was also in uh, Crazy Rich Asians, I believe. Okay, he slurred off there at the end, so I wasn't quite sure. Uh, also, December fourth is No Bad Land. Uh, no Band Land. No Mad Land. Oh, okay. A, a road movie following Fern, a woman in her sixties who, after losing everything in the Great Recession, embarks on a journey through the American West, living as a van dwelling modern day nomad. What, yeah. Is this set current times or? Well, it does say modern day. Okay. I mean, it's topical. There are people but doing that, that right now. But then it also does say losing everything in the Great Recession. So that could be any time, I guess. Yeah, I guess. And then we skip the entire month of December and go to December 25th. Are you serious? Yeah. Jeez. All right. News of the world. 
Five years after the end of the Civil War, Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd, a veteran of three wars, now moves from town to town as a nonfiction storyteller, sharing the news of presidents and queens, glorious feuds, devastating catastrophes, and gripping adventure from the far reaches of the globe. Uh, is Queen providing some soundtrack music here? No, maybe but from their album "News of the World." Nope. <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't mean. I don't know. Uh, it stars Tom Hanks as the Captain Jefferson Kyle Kid. Okay. I I didn't know that Tom Hanks was even involved in a project right now. So that's news to me. Also, twenty December twenty fifth is Pinocchio. I didn't really even write up the bumper for this because we should all know what Pinocchio is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's fair. you know, I, I guess I'm one. Of, so they've done good things with remakes. I won't say they don't, but I just don't know what you're going to do different with this. That makes it better or. Also, I mean, the story of Pinocchio, we've done at least like five different movies of the same story that I know of off the top of my head. So what what new are we going to do here? Exactly. Uh, also, December 25th is Wonder Woman 1984. I'll yes. read this, even though I don't know that I need to. Uh, fast forward to the 1980s as Wonder Woman's next big screen adventure finds her facing two all-new foes, Max Lord and the Cheetah. There's Gail Gadot as Wonder Woman. Yeah. I'm going to see this. Uh, I probably am not going to see it in theaters because um, I don't think uh, even by December 25th we'll really be able to do so. But uh, but yeah, I'm excited for this. Well, you do know that our local theater is renting out an entire bay. No, go on. <laughs> we'll go look it up. Okay. <laughs> What, you can rent an entire theater? Yep. Hmm. I might do that. <laughs> uh, also, December 25th, um, and that might be wrong. It might be December 30th. Uh, one of those two dates, uh, Promising Young Woman. Everyone said Cassie was a promising young woman until a tragic event abruptly derails her future. Now she's a medical school dropout, living at home with her worried parents and working at a coffee shop with her concerned boss. It seems like she is at a standstill, except for the double life Cassie leads at night. Dun, stars Carrie, star, stars uh, Carrie Mulligan, Allison Brie, and Connie Britton. Okay, cool. I guess at least we're having movies coming out. And finally, on December 30th, uh, is Monster Hunter. Behind our world, is an, there is another world, a world of dangerous and powerful monsters that rule their domain with deadly ferocity. When Lieutenant Artemis and her elite unit are transported through a portal from our world to a new world, they are in for a shock of their lives. In their desperate attempt to get home, the brave Lieutenant encounters the mysterious hunter whose unique skills have allowed him to survive in this hostile land. Faced with relentless and terrifying attacks from the monsters, the warriors team up to fight back and find a way home. Sounds stars, interesting. Stars Mila Djokovic, and uh, it does look pretty good. Uh, I hope it lives up to the CGI uh, heavy scenes that I've seen so far. With the alien monsters? Yeah. And All that right. is that is our second that is our two pages worth. Woo woo. I think you already really nailed it. I mean Wonder Woman's the must see. Yeah, it's it's Wonder Woman. I'm I apologize to the other movies while they're you know, they're sound intriguing. Uh I'm sorry. Wonder Woman has got it. I I'm thinking that Wonder Woman could be the one movie coming out that could push uh the, the capabilities of theaters right now. Yeah, well, those that are even open. Uh, yeah, I think the, as far as I know, the one in our area is. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, uh, if, if, yeah. Just so and you know, we'll you, move on. You can't get refills, but they don't <laughs> tell you that. 
<laughs> it was kind of annoying. <laughs> so I went to a movie a month or so back and they give you your cup. They don't say anything to you. And, you know, the first time you fill it up, it's half foam. Right. I put the cap on, went and sat down and said, oh, I'll just go get more later. I came back out and they're like, oh, you can't get more. You have to buy a new cup. I'm like, I have to buy a new cup? Really? <laughs> I wish you would have mentioned that. But yeah. Anyways. On to DVD releases. DVD releases. Um, there is actually some coming out here this month. Um, made in Italy. A father and son restore a Tuscan village, but must come to terms with each other. Uh, the known name in this one is uh, Liam Neeson. I think most of the DVDs are made in China, actually. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> Week of December 8th, uh, Possessor Uncut. Uh, an assassin has his mind implanted into an unsuspecting victim, but the host mind fights back. Uh, it does sound kind of interesting. It's essentially the assassins always have their their mind inserted into someone else so that, you know, someone else is basically taking the fall for it. But yeah, it seems kind of cool. Uh, she dies tomorrow. A uh, girl believes that she is going to die tomorrow and everyone that she talks to believes it as well. And now the small tone that she's in Everyone basically is believing they're living out their last hours. Uh, week of December 15th, we have Tenet with Robert Pattinson as the big name attached on there. Uh, feels very much like, uh, like maybe Minority Report with a touch of like three seconds where you have like the ability to kind of travel against the flow of time. Um, it looks interesting. Yeah, I mean, they, they tried to release this back in August, and then I think again yeah. in September, and now they're just coming out with it on DVD, it looks like. And the other one that came out with it, uh, Infidel. Uh, wife travels to the Middle East to rescue her outspoken journalist husband. Uh, and then we have one that really has kind of been torn apart. Uh, it's Bella Thorne and Alec Baldwin in Chick Fight. A woman turns to underground fighting to pay her bills. And it, I'll, I'll be honest, I watched the trailer and I, I didn't chuckle at all, but I mean, Alec Baldwin's being Alec Baldwin. So that part was at least kind of entertaining. But if you, uh, if you read any of the reviews on this, people are just like, this may be the worst movie released this year entirely. So, it, it word sounds, of warning. It sounds like something that should be R-rated and on like the old Cinemax channel. Yeah, no doubt, right? <laughs> uh, the opening act. A young man tries to get into, into the stand-up comedy business. Um, and this is my pick of uh, the month here, The Wolf of Snow Hollow. A uh, sheriff has to figure out if the recent killings in his little mountain town are the work of a serial killer, a wolf, or something worse. Empires. Um, actually, they kind of lean into that it's werewolves. Hmm. So, because well, where that, there's werewolves, there's vampires. Oh my goodness. Doesn't always have to be. <laughs> Um, uh, and the War with Grandpa with Robert De Niro and Uma Thurman and this is the one that's the prank war between the grandfather and the grandson essentially the old school stylings versus the new stylings kind of thing yeah I when this was kind of released I wanted to see it but you know yeah might be and a then, renter and, and then I just had to put it in here even though again not reviewed well is jujitsu with Nick Cage. Uh, the, the, the whole Ace premise for it <laughs> is uh, basically these monks of jujitsu have been protecting the earth from 600 years, and the uh, one master gets amnesia and basically forgets that he's supposed to defend earth. So they have to go and jog his memory, basically. So it's it's a Nick Cage movie. So know that when you're getting into it, 
It's a Nick Cage movie. Ew, odds are it'll be terrible, but there's always a chance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the bad thing is, is like, I'll, there are a few of his movies that like, they are guilty pleasures for me. Like, I know they're not cinematic masterpieces, but I just enjoy them. I made reference to Face Off. I like that movie. Face Off was fantastic. Con Air, not terrible. Con Air, Con Air was good. I liked Con Air. <laughs> so, but that and is... then the list. Oh, you know, National Treasure. All of those were really good. I liked National Treasure. Yeah, I I like the Nick Cage movies. I know when I'm watching a Nick Cage movie, what's coming. It's going to be a Nick Cage movie. Even his um, Wicker Man. I enjoyed just because it's just Nick Cage being Nick Cage. And we sliding right into video games here, Jay. Video games it is. All right. Uh, It's a longer list uh, than what we've been seeing. So obviously in preparation for the holidays or getting those last ones in there. Uh, Kronos Before the Ashes comes out on everything December 1st. Uh, Empire of Sin comes out December 1st. Uh, Empire of Sin, very much a uh, gangster kind of tactical maneuvering. Uh, Reminds me a lot of the old 360 game Omerta, but hopefully they made it better than that. Uh, And then, of course, we have Rainbow Six Siege porting to the new stations. We have Twin Mirror coming to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and the PC December 1st. I I tried to watch the trailer of this and I didn't know any more about the game after. Thank you. Thank you, right? It's it's like, okay, it's cinematic. I'll give it that. But what's the game? (laughs) You know, it's, yeah. (sighs) Um, Worms Rumble coming to the PlayStation systems. Uh, And of course, gotta love a a Worms game. Uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising coming to everything December 3rd. Uh, Very much looks like uh, Ubisoft saw Zelda and was like, we can do that. So it looks very much kind of like a uh, a Greek god influenced Zelda game. Yeah, you know, and I kind of was comparing it to a little bit like uh, it looked like it might be a little open world, like World of Warcraft to yeah. a degree. But the sound effect in that, I watched like five minutes of gameplay video, and the sound effect of the fighting drove me nuts. Oh, I, I couldn't. I like was like I'm done because they would they were showing different areas that this the lead fighter was fighting and it was the same sound effect every time Uh, 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 uh. it's like okay that's annoying (laughs) i mean it just in that short like couple minutes i was already like "Mm, i don't know that i want to play this game just because they totally don't need all of the grunting and groaning every time the character swings uh we have Dragon's Quest, or Dragon Quest, sorry. Dragon Quest Eleven, uh, S Echoes of an Elusive Age, the Definitive Edition, coming to uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC on the 4th. I believe this originally came out on the Switch, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why it's called the Definitive Edition. Um, but it looks cool. I always like the I Dragon mean- Quest games. It, it goes all the way back to the old NES days, man. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, yeah, I can get into this. I sat with that. I beat that the original Dragon Quest, but I did it by going back and forth across the map to power up my guy oh, for geez. hours, hours. <laughs> I went back and forth just to get bad guys that I could kill. You, like you, I had you, a pattern, like go this, this route, and it was crazy. You were grinding. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was hours worth <laughs> uh, FIFA 21 coming out for the new systems December 4th which I'm sure a lot of people will be excited about we have 
Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light on the Switch on the 4th. Uh, Fitness Boxing 2 Rhythm and Exercise on the Switch. Uh, we have John Wick Hex coming to the Xbox One and the Switch on December 4th. Uh, that is already on the PC and the PS4, I believe. Yeah, it's more of a, a top-down combat game. Yeah. Where you're... Um, a bit more tactical. Like Jagged Alliance. Like you got a, you, you get so much movement, mm-hmm. and then you move, and if you see something, you can shoot. If you can't, you um, you wait to the other the, the, the CPU guys to go, and then... So yeah, it'll be, I'm kind of interested to see more of this. Uh, we've got Madden NFL 21 for all the new systems there on the 4th. We've got Call of the Sea on all the Xbox systems on December 8th. Yeah, I wasn't. This one looks like a point and click, like Mist type game. It's exactly that's what I thought too. Uh, Mist or you know, kind of the old uh, uh, riddle games or puzzle solvers, something to that effect. Uh, Destiny 2, of course, porting to the new systems on December 8th. Is that needed? I mean, it's. What is I that, mean, like eight years old now? Well, here's the thing. Um, they've actually increased their player base. So obviously they're doing something right. And I played it for a little bit and I enjoyed it. But, I mean, I moved on. Uh, Tentem coming to the PS5 on December 8th. Um, and as I was watching this, I said to my girlfriend, I said, "I this looks like... Uh, Pokemon meets uh, Penguin Island. Like it's, it's clearly that these creators wanted to make uh, an open world MMO Pokemon game, but they couldn't get the license. That's exactly what it looks like. Wow, I have my uh, my uh, replica sword I'm putting together for from Destiny Two. Oh, there you go. Uh, we have Brigadine the legend of I'm going to butcher this Runercia for the PS4 Uh, very much um, kind of uh, man like Wrath of Khan not Wrath of Khan uh, Genghis Khan sorry getting my cons mixed up there um, the old Koei style games. That, that's what it really feels like. Um, and they haven't pushed it back yet, but Cyberpunk 2077 is supposed to come out on the 10th. It looks amazing. It really does look cool. I, I love open world games, and uh, this seems to have everything that makes those great. So, um, Then we have Haven on the PS5 and the Xbox series. Uh, Sword of the Necromancer on the PS4, the Xbox One, and the Switch. That one intrigued me a little bit, I'll be honest. Yeah, though, all the trailers that I was able to find, it, like, okay, it's, I don't know. I enjoy the old school ones, but the... 2d sprite styles now i just i don't i don't want to go back into those anymore it you know as long as it brings something new i guess i will be okay with it okay okay uh we have the collection of saga final fantasy legend for the switch collecting i believe the first three of the final fantasies so you can play them on the switch and then if you feel like getting some uh, motocross action going in there, we have MXGP 2020 coming out on the PS4 and the Xbox One and PC on December 16th. So, rounding out. so they're getting the 2020 title in just in the nick of time. Just in time. <laughs> I'm surprised they're not releasing 2022. Maybe some of these game companies go. Yeah. But there's actually there's some decent stuff in there. Um, surprising that there's that much coming out this close, but you know, 
Yeah. Well, you can tell that they get to a point and they just stop. I mean, almost everything is out by the 10th. And then it's just the motocross game that comes out on the 16th. And then that's it. Yeah. There's nothing released until the end of the year from then. So, but yeah, there's, there's the, depending on how they do the 10, 10 one that has the possibility to be kind of crazy and we'll all be hearing about it. Um, FIFA is going to do well because it always it's, does well. It's out on the other systems already. True. True. So, so a lot of those were just, they're already out. They're just coming out for the two new systems. Yeah, like, but Empire of Sin is the one that caught my attention the most there. I'm going to take a look at that one. Yeah, because Madden's already out. They're just releasing it on the two new ones. So, And I mean, come on, if you've got the new system you, and you're a Madden fan, you're probably going to pick it up. Yeah. If you don't already own it. Just saying, they're pretty and shiny. <laughs> yeah. All right, movie classic. It was your pick. It was my pick, which gives you until the end of the podcast to figure out what your pick is for next month. <laughs> uh, I picked Kung Fu Panda. Woo woo. Um, I can read the back. Go Prepare for, for awesomeness with DreamWorks Animation's Kung Fu Panda, a delightful movie that can stand among the very best animated features. Jack Black is perfect as the voice of Poe, a noodle slurping dreamer who must embrace his true self, fuzzy flaws and all, in order to become the Dragon Warrior with groundbreaking animation, an all-star cast and high kicking humor. Kung Fu Panda is ultra satisfying entertainment. (laughs) So all exclamation points aside, why'd you pick? You know, the first I just thought it was a great movie. To be honest, it has kung fu. It has a story of a panda that shouldn't be. Um, no one would pick to be the savior. Um, and then they weave some just really kind of good stories around that. No, and, I absolutely. And, and you know you got Jack Black as a voice, um, Dustin Hoffman, Angelina Jolie, Ian McShane, Jackie Chan, Seth Rogen, Lucy Liu. So they kind of took off the gloves with uh, with who they brought in for that. Yeah, and it's funny because every time I start watching this movie, I forget that Seth Rogen is even in it. <laughs> and then you hear his voice and you're like, oh crap, that's right. He's in this. But actually, I think uh, as far as voice work goes, I think he actually nailed it. I mean, you know, kind of a, a guy that's known for being a little uh, little all over the place. I think he actually nailed it pretty well. Yeah, you know, it's really, you know, Kung Fu Panda, you know, Poe is this um, panda that works at a noodle shop with his dad, who's clearly not his dad, but uh, you get to that eventually in the movie. What? Uh, you know, and he's serving secret ingredient noodles every day, and while he's not serving secret ingredient noodles, he he um, dreams about being a kung fu fighter and one of the elite uh, is it five? I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you know they uh so he Fabulous dreams about five, this. Yeah. And then uh when word gets out that the evil bad guy is going to get loose, they are recruiting who's going to be the dragon warrior and be able to defeat him because that's what um the vision says. So of course Panda is uh the least likely to be qualified, but I think you probably know where that's going if you haven't seen the film. Yep. And uh, yeah, there's the fight scene at the end. Uh, without spoiling anything, it's just just great. Um, he's, you know, uh, it was really of a, a panda who didn't believe in himself, 
uh, didn't really understand what his, how he could be the one. Uh, it just all comes together for him. And he uh, dominates when he needs to. And then everybody loves him, of course. But, uh, uh, you know, it was just that kind of, it was, it's kind of a coming of age. It's kind of a hero. It's kind of a uh, underdog finding victory all those things kind of rolled into one with some humor, uh, you know, Panda having to go up and down all these steps and uh, one time bouncing down the steps. And <laughs> my eternal nemesis. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'll let you speak a bit. Okay. Um, I agree with everything you've said so far. Um, I think the first off the casting for the voices in this is just spot on um uh, obviously jack black as poe is fantastic dustin hoffman as shifu and a very reserved and patient most of the time is just perfect as it ian mcshane bringing that growl um in to Tai Lung, uh, the villain is fantastic. Um, uh, I, I found it a little funny that Jackie Chan, uh, the only real martial artist in the whole thing, has like three lines in the whole movie, but that's my only real complaint there. Um, uh, but the story is really, really where this movie shines. Um, and you know, the, the characters themselves aren't these one dimensional things, which when you first, you know, see this movie and you think, okay, this is, you know, a kid's movie. This is a, you know, kid's martial art movie. You know, these are very going to be one dimensional, especially considering that, you know, all these animals are, you know, different aspects of, you know, Kung Fu there. You're like, no, they're, they're going to be this one dimensional thing. And it's, you know, they all have this chance to kind of grow a little bit there, you know, not just Poe. Um, and you can't help but root for Poe. Even when you're like, oh man, it's this, you know, big fat panda who, you know, it gets exhausted running upstairs, you know, whatever. But his enthusiasm is just bubbling over. You know, he always he wants to, he wants desperately to do this, but you know, his body is kind of betraying him there. And it's, it's man, it's, it's so good because you can't help but root for the hero. Um, and kind of you pull for him, even though you're like, I don't know how they're going to do this. And you mentioned that, that final fight there. And I love that they didn't make Poe suddenly, this you know super master in kung fu there it's just like okay he's he's not doubting himself and he's trying and it was just it was a very much a, a solid moment there and uh um i'm forgetting his name right now um master ugwe that him at uh, the the tortoise there with being the the master of kung fu, I was I was liking that, and it was it was a nice uh, it was a nice counterpoint to actually show uh, Shifu and his patience there, not being infinite. That he even even this man that he most respects, he is like mm -hmm, and just has to help him out. But uh, yeah, I this movie was. I think for many, uh, it was a surprise because it's got the good voice acting. It's got a solid animation and I love Poe's dream sequences. And you can tell because they shift the, the style there to the more, you know, fantastical, you know, obviously hand-drawn style. And, you know, Poe just has these inner monologues where he's this great mess, mystical warrior. And, uh, it just it all comes together really well and i 
I applaud wholeheartedly this pick. I think it's a fantastic movie for everyone. Whether or not you like kung fu movies, whether or not you like kids movies, it's it's a good movie all around. Solid pick. All right. I wanted to mention a couple other things. Um, there's a scene uh, when Panda finally gets to uh, to the training, and they show all of the other uh, the, the ones a snake, ones a bird, ones a like orangutan, ones a tiger, and um, yeah, it's the the different styles. Uh, yeah, tiger, monkey, mantis, viper. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have them training, and they're doing these pretty cool training methods. Uh, you know, one's got fire shooting up from the floor, and one of them, a couple of them, are trying to balance on a on a, like a bowl, a giant bowl, yep. and fight. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just really, I just really appreciated that scene when they kind of highlighted each of the different styles and, yeah. and how they were incorporated into, into their fighting. So I like that. Um, the animators actually went and trained in Kung Fu to get an idea of how to make the action scenes. So really, I didn't yeah. know that. That's cool. Uh, the movie took four years to make. So they put some that. time in. Um, it's smooth. It is not one of those rush jobs. It's yeah, it, very nice. And for its age, it doesn't feel at all dated to me. It um, doesn't feel like anything's out of place or doesn't fit anymore. Um, yeah, and Poe does his is the bear technique. So which you would assume, I guess, with a panda bear. So, yeah, I, you know, I always felt like you could always just pop this in and watch it and nobody was going to complain about watching it. So. Absolutely. To me, that makes it a movie classic. I won't fight you at all. I, it's a fantastic pick and I, I love all three of them. Well, I'm sure someday in the future we may talk about another one then. <laughs> I've even I've even delved hard into the cartoon and the the add-on and yep, I watched them all. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's our movie classic. That leaves us with one last thing. What have we been up to lately? So, you'll be surprised to know that I purchased more time on the on the Xbox. Oh, okay. How are you enjoying it? I've already had a band, war band. Uh, I was on the first like big story mission with putting barrels in sewers. Yep. And I lost and everybody died. So I'm on my second war band. Okay. I'm trying a scaven war band now. Ooh. Just to see how that goes, to see the different styles. What um, was your first war band, the humans? Yeah. Mercenaries. Yeah. Okay. Um, so far that one's going well, but I'm only a mission in. So the first one's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get into the, the Skaven one, but the humans and I, like I got, I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. I couldn't find in that mission where to put the last like barrel. That's the one bad there's thing. Like, there's like four. Once in a while it's like, Hey, um, you just got to figure this out. Yeah, and and so then my party got separated and everybody got wiped. So, yeah. yeah. But um, we've I've also been playing a lot of Swim Sanity with my son. It's I a, don't know that one. It's uh, the game with gold. This uh, at the end of March for uh, Xbox. It's a side-scrolling um, fighting game, but you're in water, so you guys are kind of you float up and down a bit. Okay. And then you have. Um, well, the second board, it's a turtle. You have to defeat this turtle, and he has different attacks. Uh, the first board, I'm not thinking about it, but it's it's got bosses and uh, checkpoints, and kind of it's kind of like Life Force on the old NES, but your people. Okay, all right. So it's that kind of side-scrolling shooting. You get power-ups. Um, there's sometimes like paths you have to go down, chains you have to break to get through. Um, so yeah, it's just, and you use your, your thumb, one thumbstick to aim so you can shoot in all directions. 
Mm. Uh, so yeah, we've we've been having fun playing that together. Uh, you can actually play it online. I think up to four, maybe. Okay. Um, I read Arabian Nights by Richard Burton. Uh, so that's the, uh, the, like rich... the, the old, like Arabian yeah. nights. Not oh, okay. All right. How'd you yeah. like that? Uh, some of them are, are not great to read, but, um, cause there are a bunch of short stories in there yeah. that tie together. Uh, there's, you know, some of them talk about the, uh, the rock, um, like the D and D character swooping down the big giant bird. Oh, 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 yes. I'm sorry. Sorry, I've always pronounced that as Rook. So go ahead. Yeah. That's how they pronounce it in the bo- in the book or in the audiobook I listened to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's R O C, so mm. I mean, it's open to interpretation. So and, continue though. And then uh, that's so that's where the Arabian Nights uh, contains the Alibaba and the Forty mm. Thieves. That story's in there. Um, open O Sesame and close O Sesame. <laughs> And then uh, um, towards the last couple of weeks, I've just like had this huge itch to play Conquest of the New World. So I've been, I dedicated like way too many hours to playing that. Oh, man. So those that don't know, it's like a 1996 game that it came out in 1996. Uh, we play, I played the crap out of it then. Um, and then my my so much so that my discs were so scratched they wouldn't work anymore and the game would lock up but then it came out on steam and it was like 6.99 i'm like oh i have to so i so i bought it and just out of the blue the other day i just like had this like urge to play it and i was hesitant because i knew once i started playing it it would be hard to put down and Mm -hmm. and so it was like eight hours later i emerged not victorious but i had a good time well, to anyone watching that doesn't know, uh, Jason and I used to sit in front of his computer and there'd be multiples of us that going through our turns and just, yeah, that used to be something, God, we'd sit at your computer for a couple of hours just doing turns and everything. And I always got, you know, right after I declared independence, I usually got my, uh, my face stomped in, but, you know, such is life. I had a beautiful colony set up functioning like i probably could have won my independence and i forgot that i didn't i didn't turn the turn meter off so at 100 turns the game kicked out and said oh you lose i'm like oh "Oh, crap and there's no way to go back and fix that so i had like everything and that's that stinks man it's like oh you gotta be kidding me Oh. All right, me. Um, I, I, as far as reading, I have uh, got a collection of short stories I'm reading myself. Um, it's the Shrapnel uh, magazine. And magazine is an awful, I, I don't know if I'd quite call it correct word to describe it. Because, I mean, they are, it's a thick collection of these short stories. I want to say each story is about 20 some pages and there's about, I want to say about eight of these stories in there. So it's a nice, healthy chunk there. Um, and shrapnel is the, the battle tech, uh, short stories there. So I've been enjoying that. Um, as far as video games, I've actually been playing, uh, some red dead online, which just got a big new update. Um, as we speak, and uh, some people really like it. Some people are, are not so happy in the fact that uh, they're, they're capping the uh, continuous days in there because that used to be how you made one of the, the currencies in the game was just by continually coming in and, you know, completing a quest or something. So they, they've capped that at 28 days. And uh, eh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Um, so what happens after 28 days? It resets your progress back to zero. Oh, that's lame. Yeah. So that's kind of what people are a little upset about. I mean, at um, least, I mean, 
cap it that you can't gain anymore or something, but let you keep your character. Well, you, I mean, you get to keep your character and everything. It's just, um, it's one of those ones where each successive day you log in, you know, you get a little bit more. Oh, so yeah. So a lot of games do that though. Yeah. But once you hit 28, it just resets you back to zero. Oh, no, it, I, I'd be all right if it just kept you going at that 28 mark, but I've never been able to keep a daily streak going, so I I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, and as far as shows, um, oh, I discovered the Mystery Science Theater 3000 channel. So I've been enjoying that. And with Thanksgiving come and gone, uh, very much enjoyed some, uh, some Mystery Science Theater 3000 because it's a big thing that they do uh, on Thanksgiving. And that's primarily uh, been what I've been watching, although I did start watching the new uh, Animaniacs on Hulu as well. So I know. I am an adult. I prove it. Yep, you do. <laughs> By getting up and going to work every day. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that covers everything. So until next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>